Hey Richard here. Um, I'm with the blog Facts for Working People. The URL is um, we know what's up .blogspot com. No apostrophe, one word. And uh, I was thinking a, a couple of things about about the trade unions. I was active in the trade unions in the public sector for a long time, for 25, 30 years. And I was thinking of the recent AFL-CIO uh, biannual, every two years they have this conference, the heads of the national body of organized labor, the American Federation of Labor, dash Congress of Industrial Organizations. I won't go into the explaining how they, that became what it is, but <clears throat> that's the national body of the organized labor in the United States predominantly. And so they had a, they had a big a meeting in June, uh, and of course this is in the midst of a movement from below of the unorganized workers, those working at Amazon, at Starbucks, at Apple. Only about 12% of the American working class is organized. If you take the public sector, of which I came out, I came out of the public sector, we're talking, um, you know, 6% of the private sector is organized. And um, I'm turning this music down a bit. So, um, so they had this conference, and one of the major discussions at the conference was getting new members. Now, of course, getting new members for them for the leadership of the organized labor in the United States who have a the same worldview as the employer business unionism business unionism they call it they look at it as revenue we need more members that means more money that means greater electoral clout and getting Democrats elected in the United States we have just two political parties both Wall Street capitalist parties and the trade union leadership are wedded to the Democratic Party in the main. Most of their members are not, which is why uh, you get 100 million people not voting in the 2016 election, for example. And so they had this, so what did they do? You think on a discussion of organizing, they would invite Christian Smalls, the guy that is one of the leaders of the Amazon Workers' Union, organized on Staten Island, Layla Dalton and others who I can't name, it's happening so fast, who are organizing uh, to, uh, unions in, within, in Starbucks. This is a huge development, it's a very positive development. It's as positive a development as the strikes that are taking place in the rail and uh, in, in, public, in the public sector in Britain. And um, so they, they kept them out of the, the meeting. They didn't include these two leaders and other leaders in that of the, of the unorganized workers in a, in a meeting where the discussion was trying to get new members. And the reason for that is that the trade union leadership, the top organized labor in the United States, is bankrupt. It is historically bankrupt. It is bankrupt not so much because it's corrupt and rotten and taking bribes and all of that, or earns too much money, all of those things are true. But they're secondary factors. The predominant problem is that they see the world in the same way that the employer does, as the capitalist does. They, they cannot see an alternative to capitalism. They cannot see the possibility that workers can govern. Um, for them to organize this power to bring these young militant youth really a lot of them many of them streetwise into the movement is very very dangerous which is the same reason they suppress any movement within organized labor itself it places pressure on them that that threatens the relationship they built over decades with the bosses based on labor peace and capitalism they are becoming less and less, more and more of an obstacle. They are, they like the Democratic and Republican parties, their historical era is done. But it's not, that doesn't mean they don't have resources. 
And as I've said in some of the articles I've written for the blog Facts for Working People, the dangers for people like Christian Smalls, for Layla Dalton, for the, the, the young people in Apple and Starbucks, in, the, in Amazon, is, is now they are being preyed upon. I've seen them with pictures with Dolores Huerta, with... Uh, other labor leaders, you have to be very, very careful here. Not because these people are horrible personal characters, is because it's because their view of the world is is uh, in conflict with what you want to accomplish. They defend capital, and so it's very dangerous for them. Also, uh, uh, to be quite honest, labor notes, which is a well-known local. Uh, U.S.-based uh, group of former staffers, union officials, uh, uh, I call them the left bureaucracy, they have influence and they have the ability to bring together uh, lots of rank-and-file uh, uh, trade unionists and workers. However, historically, their role also has been to uh, capitulate to the trade union leadership, not lead a struggle against the trade union leadership. And if you're in organized labor and you want to change the situation of your co-members, your workers on the job, and you want to uh, b b b become part of the trade union movement, you're going to come into conflict with the present leadership. It's just inevitable because their view is the employers have certain rights, capitalism is the only system, and when it goes into, the, into crisis, we have to uh, 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 bail it out. And, and so uh, I just wanted to say those few things because there are there's tremendous um, developments taking place in the United States, but there's, there's big dangers. I'm very positive about it. I love to see what's going on. Uh, I follow uh, some of these folks on Twitter and the things that are happening. But anyway, I just wanted to make those things, uh, make those few points, and uh, that's it. That's Richard. Um, Oh, I was going to say this much, that the most important thing in the trade union movement, I was active in the trade union movement, is to keep your feet rooted in your co-workers, in the workplace, and in the rank and file of the trade union movement. If you're there, if you're rooted there, and you that's your base. I was a delegate to the Central Labour Council of Alameda County for 12 years. I was alone in there, but I was, I was firmly rooted among my members and my work co-workers on the job. I was involved in Tony Mazzocchi's campaign for the, a Labour Party. It was uh, 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 an interesting campaign. I won't go into that here. Uh, and my members were very involved in it. My union was very involved in it. Uh, but I never, ever, I was always rooted among my members. I ran for office for the Central Labour Council on a position of no support for Democrats and Republicans. It took me some years, four or five or six years, to get my union not to support Democrats and to campaign for a Labour Party. And so it's, um, it's, uh, it, that to me is a key question, <laughs> is to keep yourself rooted firmly among the working class your own co-workers, and your, if you're in a local, among the uh, dues-paying members of your local. And your whole approach should be to draw them into the leadership, into the struggle against the employers and capitalism. You, 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 you cannot substitute yourself for the mass movement and for the movement of workers in general. I just got back from a vacation, and these are some of my thoughts. Sitting on the porch, having a beer, Listen to a little bit of music. All right, Richard Meller, Facts for Working People. Check out our blog, Facts for Working People, at weknowwhatsup.blogspot.com. And if you have some stories you want to write for it, if they're socially conscious about working class life, send them to us. It's a rather uh, convoluted email. We underscore no underscore what's underscore up at yahoo.com. Don't blame me for that. All right, thanks a lot.